Yeah, this is the 2012 Question 2 Mechanics paper, Simple Harmonic Motion. Daniel having fun on a swing with a rope tied at one end. It's a pendulum, I'm not going to read the whole deal. If Daniel lifts his feet without pushing, so um, this is the start of the swing. Uh, swings out over the river in Simple Harmonic Motion. Um, angular motion, frequency of the motion is 1.45 radians per second, that's important. And he travels a distance of 0 0.80 meters before reaching the equilibrium position. Uh, calculate the acceleration of Daniel. Um, Daniel simple harmonic motion at the instant he lifts his feet. So, at the instant he lifts his feet, that is the maximum acceleration. Um, so we can just go straight to our equation um, and just put in the max. So the sine component is going to equal one. So it's omega squared y. Um, if we plug in omega, it was our 1.45 radians per second. Omega squared 1.45 squared times by 0.80. Um, that's going to give us uh, an answer when we plug all those numbers in of 1.68 meters per second squared. Just remember it's acceleration. Okay, um, and just a quick point on that simple harmonic motion, remember, is defined as the restoring force as proportional um, to the negative of the displacement. So it's in the opposite direction for the restoring force. That also means it's going to be opposite direction for the acceleration since force is directly proportional to acceleration. F equals MA and so forth. Um, part 2, calculate the distance Daniel travels in 1.8 seconds after he lifts his feet. So uh, calculating a distance after he lifts his feet, um, we can go straight to one of our equations. It's going to be um, uh, a cos omega t, and it's the cos one rather than the sine one, because we're starting from um, the maximum displacement, not from the equilibrium position. Um, and what we've got to be careful here is that this 1.8 seconds, we don't know how many cycles it's gone through before it gets to this, this y that we're calculating. So um, one quick calculation to do is just to find out um, roughly where it's going to be in the cycle. So if we use our reference circle, we know there's 1.45 radians per second, so that's about 1.5, so about 4 seconds we'll see one complete loop all the way around the circle. So this is 1.8 seconds, so it's not a complete loop, it's uh, a little bit less than half, so a little bit less than half. And for the reference circle that corresponds to a swing going there and back for a complete, uh, this is pendulum, remember? Uh, the reference circle, full circle, corresponds to a swing there and back. We're only going uh, partly there. We don't quite reach there. So we're quite likely that we're over 1.8 is more than half um, of, of, or more than one quarter, uh, but it's not more than a half. So it's likely to be in this section. Okay. Uh, and, and it'll be heading in that direction. So all we need now to know is what the actual... Um, uh, displacement will, will be. We plug in our numbers. A, the amplitude was um, 0 0.8, cos omega was up there and T was the 1.8 seconds. When we plug those numbers in we're going to get um, a total of 0 0.6896 96, and this is a displacement so it's in meters um, and that tells us that we're in, um, in if we get our reference circle uh, sorry, it's negative 0 0.86 meters, it's 9 meters. That tells us from our cosine curve that goes like, like that, um, that we're in the second kind of quarter, so we're in this bit here. Um, and so we have to add the displacement that's covered from the first quarter to that. So it's going to be the total displacement. I think if we call it y total, it's maybe y is not quite right. Um, it's... We'll just call it d total, just to be. It's going to equal 0 0.8 plus that. So the 0 0.8 is the distance there plus the bit we just calculated, and that gives us uh, 1.49 meters. We'll move on to the next question. C on another equation, instead of lifting his feet, he pushes off. Discuss what effect this could have on the motion of his swing. Your answer should include an explanation of for why the amplitude of his swing increases. Okay. Um, there's a number of angles we could approach from this, um, but um, when he just lets go with his feet rather than pushing with his feet, that means that's a position where his amplitude has to be maximum. There's no way under conservation of energy for it to go beyond that position. So the amplitude's fixed from equilibrium position to there. That's, that's our amplitude from there to there. However, if he pushes off at that moment, 
um, his force is going to be greater than the force if it was just SHM, just at that one moment. Um, so he's going to add uh, a greater for restoring force, causing him to have a greater uh, velocity as he passes the center, greater acceleration at that point than if he just lifts his feet off. Um, and in fact, it would be similar. Uh, yeah, it's going to give him a greater velocity at that um, at that point once he stops pushing off, and then he'll have a greater velocity at the equilibrium position, greater momentum to carry on through to a greater overall amplitude. And then when he comes back, it's conservation of energy, and and with the pendulum, it's height. So he's got to come to the same height on the other side, which means he's going to come back again and just alternate between those two positions. Whew. Um, so it's important to talk about energy, potential energy, maybe kinetic energy as well, um, definitely potential energy, to show that those those differences are occurring. Um, so that I think we've covered why his amplitude increases, because he's got a greater uh, amount of um, energy, let's talk in terms of energy, greater amount of energy, therefore greater kinetic energy at the bottom of the swing, therefore greater potential energy that he'll, gravitational potential energy that he'll gain, which means the amplitude must be higher. That'll do. It'll, you get the idea. Moving on, D. Sometimes Daniel sits on the wooden bar and sometimes he stands. Discuss how the period of the motion will be affected. By the way, Daniel rides on the screen. There's, there's a couple of approaches you could take for this. Um, one of them is probably more right than the other. Um, there's, there's two. You could... I've seen this in the scholarship question, is why I say there's two approaches. You could look at just the SHM um, equation for a pendulum, 2 pi square root L over G. Um, when he's standing, so when he, when he stands, it's um, your center of mass is moving up, which means your length is decreasing. So that means uh, since T is proportional to square root of L, as your length decreases, your period also decreases. Um, so he, this one, this part would apply if he uh, starts the swing in a standing position or a seated position. The other one that could apply um, is um, uh, maybe we're, yeah okay angular momentum. If we're looking at angular momentum which would probably not, because this is a question specifically focused on simple harmonic motion. But if we're looking at angular momentum, if he um, stands up halfway through, um, so he's going, as he stands up, he is um, decreasing the inertia, which will have to increase the angular velocity. So that could lead to a, a greater inertia, uh, uh, sorry, a greater amplitude. Um, and greater amplitude would sort of indicate that his period is increasing um, rather than decreasing. But yeah, I'm I'm not sure about that. But I'm let's forget about that because we're that's scholarship level kind of stuff. And this is where the question's headed at. If I have a quick look at the marking schedule, yeah, that's what they're after. So they're after the simple harmonic motion approach. So that is what they're interested in.